Hello everyone, it's Mr. Malcher here, and in this video, we're going to have a good long think about how to analyze a text. We're going to look at what constitutes quality analysis and how to organize your notes to help make your analysis easier to understand. We're then going to look at how to use those notes to write amazing essays. In this series, we're going to be looking at examples from the novel Briar Rose to demonstrate the process of analysis. Before we can undertake an effective analysis, we need to be clear on what is analysis. And for this definition, we're going to look to the glossary of keywords on the Nessa website. Now, these are the terms that are used to inform the syllabus, to inform your assessment tasks, and ultimately, to craft the questions that you will be asked in your HSC exams. Now, these words come from the glossary that can be found at the web address on the screen, or simply by doing a web search for HSC student glossary keywords. The first one we're going to look at is analyze, which is to identify components and the relationship between them to draw out and relate implications. To break that down, the first part asks us to identify components. Now, identify is itself a keyword from the glossary, and to identify means to recognize and name. It's important that we know the correct names for the things that we are talking about so that we can use more technically specific language and get more information across in our analysis with fewer words. So we have to recognize and name the components. Components are the bits, the parts, the things that make up the text as a whole. However, it's not enough to just be able to recognize and name the components. We also have to be able to identify the relationship between them. How do the parts work together to construct the text that we are analyzing? But then finally, we have to be able to draw out and relate implications. Implications is another word for meaning and ideas. Once we have identified the components and considered the relationship between them, we have to be able to discuss and explain how do those components work together to communicate meaning and ideas. And that is the basic process of analysis. However, if you want to write more sophisticated essays, and if you want to be working towards higher bands in your HSC exams, there are two other words from the glossary that you should be aware of. The next one is evaluate, to make a judgment based on criteria or to determine the value of something. To make a judgment means to form an informed opinion. Having completed a detailed analysis, you will have information available with you to form an opinion about the quality of the text you have studied in relation to the topic that you are studying it for. Now, it's not enough to just make a judgment. It's not enough to just say, I think this text was good or bad or could have been better for whatever reason. In an exam or in an assessment task, you are asked to evaluate, to make a judgment based on criteria. Now, those criteria will be determined in response to the question you are answering. So, this is where your informed knowledge of the text needs to come to bear in order to define criteria or draw criteria from the question upon which to make your judgment. But then finally, Another meaning of evaluate is to determine the value of something, which is a way of asking which components in the text are the most or least important, relevant, effective. But like with just the making of a judgment as any part of evaluation, determining which elements are the most important, relevant or effective will depend on the criteria that you are judging against. The next term from the glossary is to critically analyze or evaluate. Once you are comfortable with analyzing and evaluating, you can then engage in critical analysis and evaluation. 
in which you add a degree or level of accuracy, depth, knowledge and understanding, logic, questioning, reflection and quality to your analysis and evaluation. We'll come back to this one later in this series, but for now, just understand that once you have completed a detailed analysis, you are in a position to make a judgment and hopefully expand that judgment into the realm of critically analyzing or evaluating your text. So now that we have some understanding of what analysis is, you're probably asking yourself, how do I analyze a text? And in this section, we're going to go through the process of analysis. At its core, analyzing is a pretty straightforward three-step process in which we observe, question, seek answers to those questions, and then use the information we find to inform more detailed observations. But let's break that down in more detail. When we read a book, view a film, read a poem, watch a play, or engage with any text we might be called upon to study in English, we are observing the details of that text. And as you watch or read, you should be taking notes of the things that stand out, the things that seem important, the things that are clearly contributing to some of the main messages and ideas of the text. Once you have collected your observations, they might prompt a series of questions. And questioning is at the core of effective analysis. Analyzing a text is a critical thinking process in which asking questions of what you see is the key thought process you need to be engaging with. Your questions might begin with, what's the name of that thing? Or what is happening in that particular moment in the text? Do I know what technique is being used? But then, as you develop more informed observations, your questions might start to be about the meaning of a moment in the text, or might start to be about its relationship to other texts or other ideas. But asking those interesting, intriguing questions is one of the key processes of effective textual analysis. Once you have your questions, then you start to seek answers. In some cases, the answers might already be in your notes from class, in study guides that you've read, or searchable on the internet. Many of the texts that you study in your HSC have been studied many times before, and there is a wealth of information out there once you know the right questions to look for answers to. And as stated earlier, once you have found answers to those initial questions, that information might help you to form more comprehensive observations, more complex observations of the text as you go through it a second and possibly even a third time. But that, at its core, is the process of analysing a text. 